od postanka svijeta pa do pojave prvih ljudi na zemlji. Brojne su teorije našeg dolaska. Tisuće različitih jezika pisalo je našu povijest, napretke i odrastanja. Civilizacije kao i ljudi rađale su se i umirale. No ostavljale su tragove, znanja i iskustva svojih zajednica. Zahvaljujući pisanom i verbalnom jeziku, svijet je postajao manji i razumljiviji. I naši suputnici na zemlji, životinje, oduvijek su komunicirale njima vrlo razumljivim jezikom. U njihovom svijetu prepoznavanje vizualne poruke, pitanje je opstanka. Mogli ste vidjeti da se situacija potpuno mijenja. Ja nisam ništa rekao, ali on sumnja i ide provjeriti što se dešava. Čitanje ponašanja drugih vrsta kroz boje, oblike, kamuflaže, pokreta ili vizualne nagovješte, agresije ili straha. Životinjama je urođeno. Nužno za preživljavanje. Govor tijela kod životinja dokaz je da komunikacija bez riječi može biti važnija od izgovorenog. O tome ovisi hoće li jeste ili biti pojedeni. Svijet neverbalne komunikacije pojavio se s nastankom živih bića na zemlji. Ljudska vrsta priključila se ozbiljnom proučavanju ove discipline, nedavno, tek koliko traje jedan prosječni ljudski život. Svaki čovjek koji će ovako razgovarati sa vama, vi ćete misliti da je to čudno, ali na taj način upravo čimpanza razgovara, odnosno komunicira s vama. Znači ona cijelo vrijeme izbjegava, ako je sve u redu, cijelo vrijeme izbjegava Služim se kamerom kao, pri, kao, hvala, kao, kako se zove, primjerom, cijelo vrijeme izbjegava, znači, taj pogled, ako je sve u redu. Znači, ono će cijelo vrijeme izbjegavati pogled da vam ne bi uputjela prijetnju. Počeli smo komunicirati još u špiljama. Njeme poruke naših predaka. Stari Grci i Rimljare razmatrali su povezanost gesta i govora. Smatrali su da velikog govornika ne čine samo riječi. Rimski filozof Ciceron govorio je da tjelesni pokrete izražavaju osjećaje i strasti duše. Držanje tijela i gesta i govor svačao je kao cijelinu koja čini komunikaciju. Stare civilizacije ostavile su poruke o svoje moći. Progovorile su o svom postojanju kroz simbole. Prepoznatljive ideologije. Ili religije. Psst. 
provešćemo vas kroz svijet govora tijela, na način na koji je to radio Charles Darwin. Ja nisam previše brz u shvaćanju, niti domišljat. Moja sposobnost da pratim slijed misli je vrlo ograničena. Ali imam sposobnost već od drugih ljudi da uočim stvari koje lako izmaknu pažnji i da ih pažljivo promatram. Ovu misao Darwin je izrekao 1872. u svojoj knjizi Istraživanje emocija kod čovjeka i životinja i zaslužio titulu pionira na proučavanju neverbalne komunikacije. Darwin otkriva veze između ljudi i majmuna i ističe da obje vrste emocije izražavaju izrazima lica. Upravo ta Darwinova sposobnost izrodila je novu, danas već priznatu, znanost proučavanja govora tijela. Ja, to su dvije sestre, ne? Sara i Megi. Ovo je ovoga, džuba koja mene sad fiksira pogledom ili traži od mene ovoga, jabuku. To je taj moment, onda to sad govori upravo u ovom trenutku, izražava želju i onda, pošto ja ne reagiram, onda će preći laganu agresiju. Kao što vidite ovo ovaj, udarci po mojim prstima, trganje, zato jer želi da ja reagiram na njenu poruku. Znači ta poruka je izrečena i ona naravno vrlo dobro zna. Darwin je smatrao da je program izražavanja emocija instaliran u naš živčani sustav tijekom evolucije. I on može djelovati kada sa stajališta razuma, za to nema potrebe. Važan je genetski kod, a ne društveno nasljeđe ili utjeca okoline. Dakle, univerzalnost izraza lica i gesta kod svih ljudi i životinja, bez obzira na rasu, proizvodi nasljeđe. Pokretač svih naših tjelesnih radnji, mozak. On kontrolira svaku izgovorenu riječ, ali i više neverbalnih poruka koje djeluju paralelno. Neke tjelesne poruke moguće je kontrolirati, dok se većina pojavljuje neovisno o našoj želji. Mišići, pogotovo na licu, izdajnici su naših emocionalnih stanja, bijesa, srama, tuge ili sreća. I worked for 25 years as an FBI agent, three years as a police officer after doing maybe 13,000 interviews. I can tell you that the one thing I always relied on was the body language. But if I see something brand new, I'll stop, get out my notebook, write it down and record it. Um, it makes some people uncomfortable being around me just because they know what I do. So they usually do nothing, um, which is itself a message. I'm a body-mind analyst, which basically means that I read other people and teach other people how to look at other people's body language consciously, because most of the time we're reading people unconsciously. I'm interested in different forms of, of non-verbal communication, different forms of human expression that aren't necessarily words, because human expression is on a, on a continuum. You've got um, expression which is through bodily movement, but even speech is a form of bodily movement using muscles that are inside your body. La communication non verbal, c'est vraiment quelque chose de tous les jours. C'est-à-dire que je l'ai appris il y a longtemps dans mes études. Je l'ai utilisé pendant toute ma vie professionnelle et oui, bien évidemment, je l'utilise dans ma vie privée tous les jours. Est-ce que je déconnecte Non, pas vraiment. Je suis né dans un lieu petit et je connais les personnes qui me rodent depuis que je suis enfant. Je ne vais pas avoir tant de difficultés à interpréter sa communication non verbale parce que je les connais. Le problème est fondamentalement dans les grands nucléos urbains où je ne connais pas mon voisin. Et en ne connaissant pas, je ne peux pas contextualiser si son geste est sincère ou non est sincère. Sve što nas okružuje šalje poruku. Svaka slika koja prolazi kroz naš mozak, 
ima svoju rečenicu, svoje verbalno objašnjenje. Toliko je priča moguće ispričati samo pažljivim pogledom ili slušanjem. Ples i glazba, najstariji su ljudski odnosi, skrivaju tajne. Pokazuju raspoloženje. Pripadnost grupi. Ili nacije. Pokretima tijela pokazujemo ljubav, strast, hrabrost ili zahvalu prirodi. Pretvaramo slike u razumljive emocije. Neverbalno možemo objasniti i izgovoriti. Bojama i odjećom Šaljemo poruku o našem položaju u društvu ili u radnom okruženju. Boje upozoravaju. Raspiruju strasti. Odbijaju ili privlače. Pokazuju status ili stav. Obilježavamo tijela. Postavljamo žive slike. Svrstavamo se. Ili nam to rade drugi. A3317 Postajemo živa knjiga. Omogućujemo životinjama da sudjeluju u umjetničkom činu. Pretvaramo se da smo nešto drugo. Šaljemo poruke dizanjem i spuštanjem ruku. Mašemo ili fučkamo. Sudjelujemo. Je li moguće pročitati hrabrost? Treba li vjerovati obećanju uzdignutog prsta? ili govoru stisnute šake. Kako se tekst izgovara pogledom, osmijehom ili kimanjem glavom? Zašto se i kako rukujemo? Što poručujemo stiskanjem ili dodirima? Možemo li prepoznati ljubavne znakove? Kako znati sviđamo li se nekome? Ljudi govore svim dijelovima tijela, rukama, Nogama, pričaju hodom, gestama, glasnoćom glasa, mirisom, znojenjem, osmijehom, pokretima glavom, bojom šminke ili frizurom. Slanjem signala odbijamo ili privlačimo ljude. Neke su poruke društveno neprihvatljive, ali puno govore o komunikatoru i njegovom okruženju. Neizgovaranje riječi ili šutnja može biti glasna poruka. Kako nešto pročitati? Što nam poručuje blato? Kako se sve može pjevati i svirati? Kako prepoznati nervozu? Prenosi li vrak poruke kroz fontane? Kroz izgled i veličinu posljednjeg počivališta saznajemo puno više nego od imena na spomeniku. Tko su bili? Kako su umrli? Koliko su bili cijenjeni ili bogate? Zašto crvenimo kada se sramimo? Zašto namigujemo? Diramo nos... Počnimo s jezikom glume. That clock, that clock was from Poirot. That's the Poirot clock. That's in my flat. that when we go right back to the early days of theater there were no words it was all mime they didn't they, they expressed themselves through their body they didn't even have their faces to show you a smile or show you a frown they had mask and the mask 
and they'd use their heads to show you through their head movement what they may be feeling and the rest of the body would move in such a way. Kad sedite u kavani i vidite za onim stolom neko sedi i pije kavu, vi znate da je to glumac. Ja imam dlouho u praksi zrci. A vím, a často si to uvědomuje, že herec podvědomě, aniž bych to věděl, když řekne miluju, tak k tomu už ti udělá obličej. Jo? A nebo řekne ne, tak já ne. Jo? Je přesvědčivý, snaží se být přesvědčivější, ale vlastně leže. Stejně jako člověk, který v životě leže, tak si dává pozor na to, jak se, jak se u toho tváří. Starý pravidlo, ale ještě z dob němého filmu, kde vlastně herec nemusel hrát vůbec. Jenom prodával svůj obličej a svoje, svoje tělo. Jak byl totiž v těch němých filmech, začal hrát tak, aby nahradil ty slova, tak nebyl pravdivý, nebyl upřímný. When I open a play, when I open a film script or a television script, all I have are words. Those words must become mine. And by finding what those words mean and placing those words in the right place in my body, I will become a different person. Per son, Latin, through Per son, sound. You are still the same old Hastings. You have the speaking countenance, mon ami, and I do not wish you to sit staring at all the guests with your mouth wide open and give, as you say, the game away. I say, Poirot, that's a bit strong. I do play poker, you know. Yes, and always lose. Look at her, the, uh, the actor in, who, um, who does the, the modern-day Hercule uh, Poirot. Look how he walks. Look how he deals with the world, the way he dresses. A little patience, mes amis. And Poirot, he will explain. This is silly with my beard, but this was, um, as you can see in the photograph, that moustache is as much the man and how I'm standing and how I'm holding the cane, you can tell so much by just that physicality of the character, I hope, than as much as anything else. He's not like that every day, but he knows, he knows that to, to, to make you believe, he has to do it, and it's, and it's those delicate behaviors that he uses that make you want to watch. And that's the difference between a great movie and a great actor and everybody else. It's the body language. It's not the words. If I sit in a chair like this, I haven't said a word, but you will feel something if I let, sit back like this. Or this. Or this. You will get something different every time without a word. No. <clears throat> A získal jsem velkou praxi tím, že jsem dělal divadlo v cizině. Často v řeči, který jsem nerozuměl, třeba v Maďarsku nebo ve Švédsku. A hrozně mi pomohlo to, že jsem nevěnoval pozornost tomu, co říkají, 
ale jak to říkají? Já jsem bystý oko na to, že když se ten herc dopouští jaksi toho umělého hraní. A to je, to je můj vztah k herectví. Nejlepší herec je ten, který nehraje, který je. Pravý glumac se zná. To se nemůže várat. To ili je u tebi, ili nie je u tebi. Hercule Poirot crossed the lawn with his usual rapid mincing gait, with his feet tight, tightly and painfully enclosed within his patent leather shoes. And then I thought to myself, here is his walk. Když je v rozporu slovo a ta neverbální komunikace, tak vždycky věříme té neverbální komunikaci, protože to je to, co je pravdivé a co je průkazné. If you were, if you now watch Poirot and you switch off the sound, I hope you will see just through my physical life a character that you will understand. May I ask something? Why do you insist on referring to yourself in the third person? It is intensely irritating. Because, Dr. Lutz, it helps Poirot achieve a healthy distance from his genius. I činoherec potřebuje tuto průpravu, aby byl schopný, i když to říká skrz ten text, tak to jeho tělo je aktivní, promlouvá. Je plastický v prostoru. Takže není to pouze, že řekne nějaký semantický význam, něco, co má nějaký slovní význam, ale komunikuje to celým tělem, je zaangažovaný. Řízer pozná, jestli ten herec pochopil tu svoji roli. Jo? Když se k tomu přidávají jako grimasy nebo i gesta, tak v tu ráno je vidět, že ten herec nevěří tomu, co říká a musí si k tomu ještě nějak pomáhat. Stejně tak i v životě. Když potkáte člověka, který vás chce o něčem přesvědčit a najednou začne prostě do toho tlačit i obličej, jo? grimasama a, a je, tak najednou ten člověk Ví o tom, že neříká pravdu. Good Lord, Poirot. I thought you were dead. Mon ami, Hastings. <laughs> oh, mon ami, mon ami. It is the most extraordinary thing. I was only thinking. Behaviors that come from the limbic brain are universal because these are useful for us to survive or to procreate. Um, and so, um, for instance, the squinting, right? When you squint, uh, like Clint Eastwood in the Western movies, before he's gonna shoot somebody, he squints. We know that we squint to focus or we squint when we see something negative, we go, like that, that's universal. Your thoughts in film are as loud as your words. And that's vital. And what you, how the eyes express this can speak volumes to the viewer. Whereas, for example, if you were to come very close into my face now, and you were to give me bad news, all I'd have to do to show you I'm sad or affected would be something like Ta tvář, i když je sebe víc kamená, tak jsou v ní určitý záchvy, určitý tiky. O, ne, ne, těžko rozeznatelný, ale ta tvář žije, i když se tváříte sebe mrtvolněji. Co je zase? Co je? Co chceš? Když má v ní být nějaká emoce nebo tak, 
A aby se to zdůraznilo, tak jsem přišel na to, že když herce natočím pomalým příchodem kamery, tak vlastně ten záběr, který je ve skutečnosti mnohem delší, tak se do něj soustředí víc těch pohybů. A ten, 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 ta tvář je, řekl bych, čitelnější. En fait, le plus difficile, c'est de regarder des films, et surtout des séries, des séries télé, euh, de mauvaise qualité ou des films de mauvaise qualité avec des acteurs qui sont parfois de mauvais acteurs, euh, dont on voit des décalages entre ce qu'ils expriment, entre les émotions qu'ils ont envie d'exprimer, entre le rôle et la réalité à l'écran. It's very interesting to observe people when they get very, very angry. Like uh, if you insult them, or, or if they, if if they're in a in a in a pub, and they and the first thing they'll go is what, huh? Just see what I'm doing with my chin, huh? Do you know what that is? That's that's me daring you to attack me. That's going, yeah. Come on. When you say start a fight, come on, come on. We always do that. The physical life of a, of a human being is, 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 is amazing. That's why when we're frightened, we'll go like that. It's not just because we want to show you I'm frightened, but that's what, it's all protection. And my, look at my chin, down. Bang. Kad vi stanete i nastane tišina, ta dramaturška pauza, kad se ništa ne veli, ništa se ne miče, je zapravo vrlo važna za ono što se desilo prije i što se... Zato znate dobrog muzičara ili dobrog glumca. Kad prestati pričati? Human beings need so much to be totally fulfilled and rounded. And we must keep our minds open all the time to everything like that to sounds, to music, to anything. And to learn to enjoy silence. That is so important as well. Somebody once said, a person is not, will never be fully developed until they learn to sit in absolute silence for 30 minutes. Tak tady jsem kdysi dělal Hamleta. Ale to už je hezky dávno. On se musí umět postavit, aby byl vidět. Ne normálně jak v ulici, na ulici, jako jen tak spuštěný a tak jako. Herec musí mít os figuru. To se dneska už moc neučí. Dneska se herci nutí k tomu, aby byli takzvaně přirození. Což vede k tomu, že jsou sice přirození, ale najvyšší nejsou vidět a nejsou slyšet. A tady někde probíhne Lazara Listovského jako Hamleta. Protože herec, zvlášť na velký věští, musí, být, musí mít person, musí se prezentovat. A taky tak mluvit. Ne mluvit, jak mu zobák narost, ale mluvit tak, aby, to, aby ta slova se donesla do poslední řady v ledišti. A to není nic nepřirozeného. Když on sám je přirozený, tak ta mluva a ty gesta zůstávají s ním a není to žádný hlání. Dobro, dobro. Alors, il y a un champ d'action que j'apprécie particulièrement, qui est la perception. En fait, euh, quand nous parlons de perception, bien souvent, nous pensons à des choses que nous voyons, à ce que, que nous entendons, à ce que nous ressentons au travers des organes des sens. Mais la perception, ce n'est pas que ça. La perception, c'est notre capacité à comprendre le monde, à comprendre la réalité. Nous vivons tous dans notre réalité. Et notre réalité n'est pas la réalité. Si 
It goes back to something I used to do as a drama school student. I used to go on the underground here in, in England, London, and I used to walk in on the tube and only look on the floor and not look at anybody's faces. And I would sit down and then I would look at their shoes. And I wouldn't go higher, I'd just look at their shoes. And I would try and judge that person, first of all by their shoes, then I would come up and see the position of their legs, are their hands, and try and compose a character just by what I see. And it's extraordinary how wrong you are so many times. Uh, you know, you see a pair of shoes that aren't polished, so you think, you immediately judge. And then by the time you've come up, you see a very smart collar, a tie, a very neat person. You think, why don't they clean their shoes? But what an interesting character choice. Cary Grant was, was born in a very humble family. His father was a blue collar worker. And he said in his book, I wanted to be Cary Grant. Think about that. I wanted to be the man who was always smooth, the right clothing. If you notice, his shirts always had half of an inch sticking out, always, in every scene. <laughs> Why? Because he realized, as an actor, I need to be this Cary Grant character. That wasn't who he was. And you can just also say something about uh, your practice. So, so what do you do in, in our workshop? How do we start? We immediately start with the body. We don't even present uh, ourselves or the students don't say their names. We just start moving. Uh, I start with a uh, class... Uh, of movement. It comes from what I learned in dance. We start like with some a basic class of contemporary dance and the second part we do some uh, games. Games related to some principles uh, like trust, contact, uh, alert state and then everything, the first part of the workshop is always very 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 physical. If you're going to ask for the emotion, it's called result directing, which is impossible because emotions are like children. If you ask them to come the, to play, they don't want to. But if you start to play, they come out. So if you go, it doesn't matter for the director. If I direct in somebody from another culture, of course the emotion comes in, out in a different way. You know, as long as I feed, you know, I, as the, the actor is not going for that emotion, is not trying to reach it because it doesn't work. As long as I put, or we put together the, the, the character in that situation, then emotions occur. Každý den to, že pozoruju lidi. Jsem vlastně neustálým vojérem toho, co se děje okolo mě. Takže pozoruju každého člověka, jakým způsobem se vyjadřuje. Když si sednu třeba po cestě domů jenom na chvilku na malé pivo v hospodě, tak klidně tam sedím třeba sám a pozoruju lidi, jakým způsobem se chovají. I have never seen any species sit or stand and watch other members of the species perform a story. We see them mating and, and going through courtship, but actually telling a story, at the end of which the human beings will put their two antennae together and show appreciation.
qué influencia tiene en la comunicación, a qué distancia nos ubicamos de los demás. Y en este sentido podemos hablar de dos tipos de culturas. Las culturas que promueven el acercamiento y el contacto. Y las culturas que son proclives a rechazar, por lo menos en ámbitos públicos, a la vista de otras personas, que las personas eh, entren en contacto físico directo. Dans le cadre de relations amoureuses, euh, lorsqu'un couple se rencontre, l'homme et la femme sont face à l'autre pour la première fois, et bien s'ils sont en décalage, euh, ça ne passera pas, ça ne marchera pas. Il va falloir que l'un et l'autre adoptent le bon comportement attendu par son partenaire pour pouvoir euh, ben, quelque part être synchronisé et créer une synergie ensemble. Le couple across the way, uh... They're flirting and using nonverbal communication to do so. She's uh, smiling at him. He's returning the smile. She's gesturing with palm up gestures, which are very effective in courtship. They bring the person in. They're friendly, affiliative, harmless. Uh, it's a way of getting close without actually leaning in close. Notice that her shoulders are flexed uh, forward and raised somewhat. This again is a very powerful courtship uh, cue. It means uh, I will not harm you. That uh, it's a basic way of becoming young, young again and looking like a little girl, which again is a harmless appeal. It's very attractive to the man. Uh, he is returning the shoulder cues by flexing forward. ¿Qué somos los que tienen la iniciativa? Somos los que vamos de levante. Somos los que vamos a conquistar a la mujer. Así como ocurre en la naturaleza, que, se, que, la, que el cortejo llegue a buen fin, a buen puerto, que el, que el intento de seducción dé como resultado que se produzca una pareja, es de su decisión exclusiva de la mujer. El hombre va a mostrarse, el macho va a pavonear, es decir, en español el término pavonear tiene que ver con el comportamiento del ave, el pavo, que despliega sus... el pavo real, que despliega sus colores. Esto es muy común en la naturaleza. En este sentido se ha producido una inversión, porque en la especie humana es la mujer la que más se muestra. El hombre eh, es más sobrio, tanto en su vestir como en su forma de adornarse. Ojo, no en todas las culturas. Los guerreros en Nueva Guinea, por ejemplo, de las tribus, se adornan más que las mujeres. Se colocan más plumas o eh, usan más tatuajes o perforaciones de las orejas o la nariz o se enrulan el pelo. Peter Colette cita eh, eh, un caso muy simpático, muy divertido, que ocurría probablemente en la década del 70 entre los jóvenes italianos, quienes cuando compraban un jean nuevo, un pantalón jean vaquero nuevo, lo primero que hacían era raspar la entrepierna con eh, algún objeto abrasivo para desteñirla más de tal manera que la zona de la entrepierna quedaba más decolorada, o sea, llamaba más la atención. De manera similar como entre las tribus eh, en Nueva Guinea, algunas de ellas utilizan unas vainas penianas, colocan su pene dentro de unas vainas vegetales 
que le dan una apariencia erecta eh, y, por supuesto, mucho más grande que el objeto natural. Sucede que, para que dé resultado que el hombre se acerque en su intento de conquista y esta conquista se produzca, debe haber una señal de la mujer, el doctor Colette la, lo, la llama eh, señales de permiso para el acercamiento o approach tells, señales de permiso para el acercamiento, donde la mujer realiza un gesto de sumisión. Mutual head nodding. I can't overemphasize the importance of that. By doing the same thing with each other, with their heads, uh, they're saying that I am like you, you are like me. Um, we're on the same wavelength. Positive cue. So again, the basic setting is it's a little dance, a courtship dance, by moving and receiving a movement and giving a movement back and forth like a, like a dance on a ballroom floor, uh, you become a couple that uh, is in sync with each other. And synchrony is all about what courtship is. It's getting in synchrony because uh, the ultimate goal is to move closer and closer and closer until you touch. 10 or 15 years ago, um, a friend of mine wanted to introduce me to a woman, and um, she said, well, just go to this restaurant, and she'll meet you there because she's working. I said, okay. So uh, when she arrived, uh, we shook hands, and they set us down, and she sits at the table, and her hands were like this, and she's sitting very stiff, and she's yes, no, yes, no, very light conversation. And after a few minutes, I said, did my friend tell you what I do for a living? And she says, yes, and I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm very nervous, and frankly, I just want to leave. <laughs> because she, did, she thought I was analyzing her. And so I told my friend, don't ever tell anybody what I do, because it makes them all very, very nervous. 90% of our decisions are based on emotion, so it's really good if you can actually read what someone is feeling. I'm a young man. I met a very beautiful girl who was very physical. I, I, I was with her, and she kept touching me. She, she's one of these people that, that was touching, and I thought, oh, she really likes me. And um, I, I, at the end of a little time, and she kept on you know, touching me and smiling, and I thought, well, oh, it's wrong. she's such a nice person. So I said, would you like to have, have dinner with me sometime this week? And she said, no, I'm very busy, thank you. And I thought that she was showing me that she liked me. So I was completely wrong. So you've got to be careful in life what you do physically, because you may be misunderstood. Mi jako puno volimo reći, ja imam danas, danas žena, kako, kako smo, kako malo se vratimo, taj film, kako smo se upoznali, kako smo komunicirali i uvijek govorimo nekako ko, ko Tarzan i Jane, jel? Da na neki taj način, kažem, nogama, rukama, ovako, onako, ona malo engleski, ja malo španjolski, pa ona nešto, nešto i naše, ovaj, da je stvarno, ja mislim, na poseban način, da, da, kažem, ta komunikacija očima, eh, mislim, u ljubav, općenito, nekad je nekad je manje reći i bitno, tako da ta komunikacija, taj, taj poseban feeling koji smo imali jedno prema drugome je, je bilo više nego tisuću reći. To start with, someone would give you 100%, they turn their body 100% towards you, um, and often they'll start touching parts of their body, the inside of the, the wrist is a, a, an erogenous zone, round the neck, and ladies often start flicking their hair. 
grooming and men will play with their ties or adjust their socks. Those are sort of grooming behaviours. So that starts to tell you that somebody's interested. Exhibir el cuello, como ocurre entre los lobos, es señal de sumisión cuando un miembro menos dominante se da por vencido frente a un miembro más dominante de la manada. Hay una muy buena uh, courtship cue con el hair. She primps con su mano sobre su hair. Es una manera de showing off her hair and showing off her face with the movement that draws his eyes and uh, again as a way of becoming this little girl to him uh, which is effective in courtship the sister things are common that I because they have to find that first topic that you can break the ice cream. You know, wherever the body attention is, you know, the arms, the legs, the feet pointing towards that person, that literally tells you, I'm engaged and interested. And that can work in a job interview, attraction, any of those types of things. We orient the, the feet towards the person we like. So in courtship behavior, when people are dating, you'll often see the man and the woman, their feet are pointed towards each other. Now here's what's interesting. The minute we don't like somebody, our feet will immediately turn away. Instantly. We don't have to think about it. This is a behavior that is controlled by the limbic system and it's part of our survival. Courtship is all about uh, decreasing the distance between bodies. And so the gestures are often uh, signs of this. This is a perfect synchrony of lifting the glasses and drinking together. Uh, it's almost reptilian. This is what reptiles do in their courtship. One reptile will nod its head up and down. The second reptile will follow up by nodding. And you get mutual nodding going back and forth. Uh, very effective as a bonding uh, mechanism or cue. And I can see when couples are, are really having a hard time, when uh, divorce is uh, around the corner. You see the, the, the way they touch, the way they look at each other, how they will look at each other, but their bellies will turn away from each other. And you know that this is a relationship that uh, is not going to survive.